Ancient prehistoric forts have always fascinated people. There's something exciting and mysterious about them. How did they look? What were they used for and who lived in them? What period are they from? There are many, many questions, but sadly, very few answers. In Sweden, there are 1,200 ancient prehistoric forts and different types of them in different areas of the country. The densest concentrations of ancient fortifications are in the Lake Mälaren district, along the west coast in Östergötland and northern Småland. On Öland and Gotland, there are so-called lowland forts, which are very different to the mainland strongholds often situated on high mountains, so-called hill forts. In Östergötland, which is the third largest hill fort county, there are 143 registered ancient hill forts. Of these, only a few of them have been scientifically investigated. It was not until the first half of the 1900s that ancient forts began to be examined. It was long believed that all prehistoric forts were little more than retreats used during troubled times and mainly during the migration period from 400 to 550 AD. No one ever imagined that they might have been built for reasons other than external threats. And so it was thought for a long time. Today there are several researchers with new theories about these prehistoric forts. Even the perfunctory assumption that the fortresses date from the migration period is now widely questioned. While it is true that many hill forts were used for protection during troubled times, other hill forts had religious or cultic function. The first prehistoric fort, or put more accurately, fortified farm to be archaeologically examined, was Bulberget, located on the border between the parishes of Konungsund and Östra Stenby, on Vikbolandet, east of Norrköping. Surveys began in the summer of 1906 and were to continue on and off until 1913. At first, the excavations were led by Oskar Almgren, who later became Professor of Archaeology at Uppsala University, and then by archaeologist Bror Schnittger, who completed the survey. The survey uncovered metre-thick cultural layers of findings typical of Iron Age settlements. They found ceramics, spindle weights, grinding stones, bones from pet animals as well as rivets and nails. Traces of weaponry were also found here, such as sword mountings, spear parts, arrowheads, knives, but even parlour game pieces. Some of the findings are especially unique, such as the barley flour bun that was discovered in a waste bin. The bun had been preserved because it was burned and dates back to the 4th century and the migration period, the period traditionally called the Age of the Hill Forts. Bulberget is located high up on a mountain that falls steeply on all sides except on the southern edge. On this easily accessible south side, the settlement is defined by a sharp, whale-like wall and above it is a further stone wall. Framför den stora vallen så fanns det också en mindre vall. Den syns nu bara som ett som en stensträng men Det här kan mycket väl ha varit ett fundament för en palisad.
the outlet at Munkeboda in Norsholm, where Lake Roxen meets the Motala River, has since prehistoric times been an important lock for the waterways to Lake Roxen and Lake Glan. Here lies the hill fort of Tongesta, one of the largest in the county. This hill fort forms a part of a system of several ancient forts along the northern shore of Lake Roxen. The fort was built in a place with good natural protection in the form of precipices and cliffs. On the more exposed stretches of the fort area, a protective wall was constructed. One can still see the remains of this today. An approximately 350 metre long stone wall which in parts is almost 14 metres wide and 2 metres high. In the east, the wall is reinforced with a second wall. This is also where the entrance to the hill fort lies. A 2 metre wide opening which leads onto a path into the hill fort area. In 1963, the archaeologist Anders Lindahl conducted a small study of the former hill fort. During the excavations, two foundations were investigated and many findings were made. The most prominent of which included ceramics, wet stones, nails, textiles, ancient blast nozzles and different kinds of animal bones. The foundations and artefacts that were discovered here could seem to suggest that people, and probably cattle too, lived within the hill fort for long periods of time. Apart from the impressive fort walls and its location, there is nothing to suggest that the hill fort was a military facility or had ever been exposed to external threats. The findings also indicate that the hill fort was probably used both as a dwelling and a meeting place during times of peace. While it is impossible to put an exact date on when the hill fort was built, the findings indicate that it was in use during the Iron Age. The county's largest ancient prehistoric fort is Ramunder Hill Fort, situated in the parish of Torby, just northeast of Söderköping. The hill fort is not just Östergötland's largest ancient prehistoric fort, it is also one of the country's largest. Ramunder Hill Fort is located on Vikbolandet's highest mountain, the Ramunder Mountain or Ramunderberget. From here, there is a breathtaking view over the surrounding landscape. The fort has not yet been archaeologically investigated. Large parts of the mountain have steep slopes and in the west, north and east stand heavily built walls. To the north, you can clearly see an entrance that would have been most likely easy to defend. There is even a legendary tale about a saint linked to Ramunder Hillfort, namely Söderköping and the legend of Ragnhild, the monastery virgin. Ragnhild was abducted by Ramunder the giant and taken to Ramunder Hillfort. After eight days, Ragnhild returned to Söderköping unharmed. She claimed she had been released after she managed to convert Ramunder to the Christian faith but people in the city were suspicious and rumours soon spread around the city that Ragnhild had sacrificed her innocence in order to regain her freedom. As with many other tales and stories, there are many different versions of the Ragnhild and Ramunder legend. It has been interpreted as a symbol of the battle between the emergence of Christianity, personified by the figure of Ragnhild, versus the ancient pagan religion of the figure of Ramunder. 
At that time, elemental beings or spirits were commonly seen as personifications of the old ancient gods. Maybe it was a collective decision or a collective effort that made the farmers leave the fields to instead work their fingers to the bone, heaving heavy stone up the steep mountains. Or maybe it was the ruling elite who had both the strength and powers of persuasion to get the many to work hard for the few, regardless of whether or not it was an expression of power or cult, or religion. Even to this day, Ramundar has an almost tangible air of mysticism and suspense about it, even though it is now more than 50 generations ago when the place was abandoned. <laughs> 